it mean? Hello, friends. I am Killov, not the crow, standing in for Volik the crow. Now, if you're like me, you've been seeing those juicy, delicious stat numbers and wondering what it do. How do it do? Why do it do? Sometimes I make up little stories in my head about what the numbers mean. Well, wonder no longer, thanks to the wonderful Steam user 300 Ping Potato, which is a great name, by the way. We now have a method to the madness that is the leveling system, opaque as it might be. Now, I am still going to explain it instead of just linking you the post, which will be in the description. But people seem to be generally uh, overall confused still on how it works, so let's give it a shot. So right from the get-go, let's just ball up the vocations themselves and yeet them out the goddamn window. Because they're just going to confuse things for the time being. So when you have a character freshly created, these are your base stats. You can see we've got 500 health, 600 stam, 40 strength, 40 defense, 30 magic, 30 magic defense, 25 weight, 0 knockdown power, and 100 knockdown resistance. A pretty decent general stat spread for any aspiring Arisen, except for mages, I guess. They kind of get the short end of the stick this time around, but given how overpowered they were in DD1, you, you can take it on the chin this time. Now, in the game's code, there exists a giant index of what happens at every singular level that is completely independent of any vocation. Because remember, we lock those bad boys away and we threw around the key, which we're going to have to look for later when we do it on Lock It. But this leveling index shows exactly what's going to happen on every level. No muss, no fuss, no cocoa nuts. We see a couple of notable breakpoints. 1 to 30 seems to be kind of the most important for determining what your character is going to be, at least in the short term. It starts to slack off a little bit from levels 45 onward. I mean, you stop getting carry weight at all past level 40. And you stop getting knockdown power past level 81. I'll be leaving a link to the general post in the description below so you can peruse all 200 levels at your leisure, not that you'd ever need that many levels. So now we understand how leveling works in a vacuum, and we can go find that key, we can unlock the vocations so we can get them back into the equation. Stop! Before we look at how it affects leveling per vocation, we need to address the elephant in the room. Your stats change whenever you pick a new vocation. And this is completely independent of leveling. So just the act of picking a vocation will make you better at whatever that vocation is supposed to be doing. And there's some massive disparities here, especially for a level one character. I mean, look at the, the 300 knockdown resistance as a warrior. You felt like a tank when you picked the warrior class? That's not an accident. Most classes get minus 50. I mean, the fighter barely, the fighter just breaks even. This is especially important because no levels ever actually give you knockdown resistance. Very interesting stuff. So now that we know that just changing your vocation adds some flat bonuses to certain statistics, we can ignore those for the sake of just knowing how leveling works itself. But this, this is the holy grail of how leveling works. And it's literally just as simple as this. You remember that big ass leveling chart with a whole bunch of set values of what you gain at every single level? Well, every vocation in the game has a stat multiplier that adjusts those values before they get added to your permanent totals. And uh, th th that's it. That, that, that's the whole thing. That's how leveling works. <laughs> this is a lovely room of learning. Take care now. Bye bye then. When will the lies end? Now let's run some examples with our boy, the warrior, since his stat multipliers are so goddamn all over the place, it makes it easier to understand. Warrior gets a 1.5 health multiplier, a 1.0 stam multiplier, a 1.5 strength multiplier, a 1.2 defense multiplier, a 0.6 magic multiplier, and a 0.5 magic defense multiplier. And then everybody gets the same exact weight knockdown and knockdown resistance multipliers. Now we can take this and we can plug it into each level respectively. So say we just leveled up from 10 to 11 as a warrior. Level 11 grants 28 health. So warrior has a 1.5 times multiplier on health, 
So we get 42 health onto our permanent stats just forever. Easy peasy. It works exactly this way for the rest of the stats for every single level. For instance, a thief with its 0.9 multiplier would only get 25 health. So we take our base character stats, we add in the flat stats for just being that vocation, and then we just plug in whatever classes we were at any particular level and use those modifiers, and this... Uh, you didn't notice I played a polymerization card! There it is! A fully explained Arisen, stat values and all. Though I wish there was a chart that showed what level you were for every single vocation when you got the level, but you know, we don't live in that world. Now here's the good news for people who are wondering if they've screwed up their character because they spent the past 40 levels as a warrior and now they want to try mage and they discovered, man, I really like blasting the hell out of shit. Well, good news, there are stat maximums. And by around level 200, you will hit every single one of them. So it really doesn't matter all that much. I mean, if you wanted to min-max the crap out of it, you would have to change your class at every single level. And the game just isn't difficult enough for you to need to do that. Now, you are gonna run into problems if you spent your first 50 levels of warrior and decide you wanna be an archmage now. It's not gonna work out that well. But you should still be able to complete the game. And as long as you keep on getting levels, it'll all get there eventually. So hopefully this helps demystify some of the leveling shenanigans. Once again, thank you, Steam user 300 Ping Potato. It's just just a fantastic name that tickles me every time I read it. It's not like DD1. You don't have to care quite as much, which is honestly kind of nice because in DD1 you had to play a billion classes that you didn't want to play, so you could optimally play the class you wanted to play. Honestly, I kind of think it's better this way, but. I'm sure some people will disagree. Special thanks to my channel members who give me the motivation to keep going. You guys are truly wonderful. Peace out, y'all.